So, we will now start off with a very important topic in uh, radiation, the topic all of you have been waiting for, I mean that is how do you calculate radiation heat transfer between surfaces. As far as engineers are concerned, there are many surfaces, each is having its own temperature, each is having its own reflectivity, emissivity and so on, absorptivity. And when these surfaces are a part of an enclosure or otherwise, what is a net radiation heat transfer? This is basically required. Even if other modes of heat transfer are there, for example, conduction and convection, you have to take care of radiation, right. So, you may solve your convective heat transfer at every iteration, you, you may stop, calculate the radiative heat transfer rate, update in your convection solver and proceed. Or it may be just a pure radiation problem, for example, you are interested in the cooling of uh, the cooling of electronics, okay, in a satellite, okay. So, you have a lot of uh, equipment which is generating heat and the temperature of those equipment has to be controlled, okay. How will you do that? You will employ a heat exchanger, right. You will have a heat exchanger, it will pick up the heat and then uh, the fluid which has picked up the heat must be cooled again, so that it is in a position to pick up the heat again, because these electronics are continuously operating, correct. So, that uh, hot fluid has to become cold fluid somehow, so, therefore you need an exchanger. Unfortunately, there is no ambient air in the outer space, okay. No convective heat transfer is possible, therefore only radiative heat transfer is possible, okay. So, if radiative heat transfer is possible, so your design hinges on how you are able to select, uh, select your surfaces, what is the configuration, whether you want to have fins, what type of fins you want to have, how many number of fins, what will be the fin pitch thickness, what material and you have to solve the combined conduction radiation problem and design this space heat exchanger, right. So, you are, so there are so many applications in which this has become important, uh, satellite temperature control, design of combustion chambers, design of furnaces, design of radiant superheaters in your boilers, okay. Even in other problems where you have cooling of electronics, radiation also has its, has its part to play. I told you in one of the earlier classes that even at a low temperature radiation is significant, right. It, it is comparable with natural convection and so on. Therefore, it is imperative that we have a method to determine, to compute the radiative heat transfer between surfaces, okay. So, let us start off with this topic. So, we learn what is called as the enclosure theory, right. So, enclosure theory was developed by Professor E. M. Sparrow, Professor E. M. Sparrow and his colleagues at the University of Minnesota, Minnesota in the US in the early 60s, okay. So, Sparrow did not do much, he just wrote some 800, 900 papers and he guided some 100 PhD students, <laughs> okay. He is still there, he teaches numerical heat transfer and radiative heat transfer in Minnesota, he is about 82 or 83, he is still alive. If you are going to US, if people are going to US, at least you must go to Minnesota and see him and come, right, when he is alive. So, 100 graduate students, 800 papers, okay. So, this enclosure theory is, is not been challenged, we developed it 40, 50 years back, even today it is very popular, we use it, even your fluent and other commercial software use this, okay. So, what is so great, what did, what did Sparrow figure out? The key idea is, key idea is like this, suppose there is a furnace, I am looking on only the sectional view. There is a dimension in the direction perpendicular to the plane of the board. Let us consider only some four surfaces T1, T2, T3, T4. 
temperatures of the four surfaces emissivity is okay so radiation from this surface can go here can go here can go here radiation from this surface can come this surface can come and this surface can also so the key idea which professor sparrow used was you account for all the radiation which is originating from a surface and all the radiation which is falling on the surface and what is going out minus what is coming in this has to be balanced among all the surfaces okay so by taking care of by taking into account all the radiation which is originating from a surface all the radiation which is falling on a surface essentially this uh, you can solve it as a system of simultaneous equations wherein you can get all the radiative probe, all the radiative fluxes you desire this is the idea now you know, what is a gray what is so great anyway it is enclosure radiation will uh, radiation from one surface will hit the other surface will get reflected and all that but the key point is suppose you have a configuration like this suppose you have what is called an open cavity like this there are three surfaces t1 t2 t3 the beauty of the enclosure theory is now it is not an enclosure right it is like a open cup whatever the beauty of the enclosure theory is you close the top you close the top by an imaginary surface that imaginary surface has zero reflectivity that is a perfect emitter and has a temperature equal to t infinity okay so that is the beauty so i consider it as the fourth surface now i also treat it as an enclosure okay so any possible configuration on this planet earth can be treated as an enclosure if, if the surface is open put a dotted line and close the surface for example even a simple there is a simple one surface enclosure so this is a how many surface enclosure very good four surface enclosure this is a three converted to four okay three converted to four now this also according to enclosure theory we can enclose it in a hemispherical you can enclose a hemispherical basket so if make it t1 t2 epsilon 2 epsilon 2 is equal to 1 t2 equal to t infinity therefore any possible configuration whether the surfaces are plane convex concave whatever it is if uh, some surfaces are open you put a dotted line and close it and make everything in the world an enclosure and then start writing looking at the energy balance in each of this this is the key idea behind the enclosure theory but with the information you already have that is the last two months looking at the radiation physics looking at the planck's distribution then the integral version is sigma t to the power of 4 then looking at all the emissivities absorptivities transmissivities as a function of angle as a function of wavelength and all that that knowledge is not enough because that is all fine if you want to calculate radiation from one surface but now you are looking at radiation from an enclosure obviously you can see that uh, geometry has a critical role to play the size of the various surfaces in the enclosure and the orientation of one surface with respect to the another with respect to another will eventually decide what is the net radiation heat transfer from each of the surfaces therefore geometry plays a critical part okay geometry played a critical part already in our definition of solid angle now it will keep haunting it will haunt you again and now more geometry will come because already you can see that you have to calculate the view factors from a particular surface one to all the other surfaces and vice versa 1 to 2 1 to 3 1 to 4 similarly 2 to 1 2 to 2 2 to 3 2 to 4 and so on you have to you have to complete the view factors between all the surfaces therefore the next key idea which will introduce is the view factor what is the basic formula for the view factor how do we go about calculating this view factors if you are solving an enclosure problem okay ah. No, what is the orientation of one surface to another surface that you do not know? That is one thing, and within a particular surface, it can be non isothermal. That means you have to subdivide a surface into sub surfaces, 
and the other surface may also be non isothermal. Yeah, you have to find out. See, from here, totally 100, for example, 100 watts is going out uh, for argument's sake. Out of which, how much is going to 4, how much is going to 3, how much is going to 2? That depends on the relative size of the surfaces and the angle or the orientation, isn't it? That we will have to know. Okay. So, we have to introduce this concept called view factor. For those people who are very algebraically inclined, view, view factors, view factors are pure fun. Okay, puzzles and brain teasers and problems you will see. First, initially, I will put some complicated formula and all that, but hopefully, we do not use that without using the formula by using algebra. We can get so we will the story will evolve slowly. Now, we will have to it is also called shape factor. angle factor, configuration factor, geometric factor, there are various other names. View factor is most widely used. Now, there is a surface, there is a surface A i, it has a temperature T i. I take an elemental area D A i. Okay. Now, the unit vector is N i. There is one more surface A j, he is having emissivity, no, he is having a temperature T j, do not worry, let us not worry about emissivity now. Okay. Now, I am taking an elemental area D j, D A j. Now, the unit vector is N j. Now, I connect the I connect the centroid of this to the centroid of this. And this distance I call it as radius r, I mean r. This angle I call theta i and this angle theta j. Okay. So, F F i j represents the view factor from the ith surface to the jth surface. So, we can take down this definition the view factor f i j, the view factor f i j between two finite areas a i and a j, the view factor f i j between two finite areas a i and a j denoted by f i j. So, the view factor but in two finite areas a i and a j denoted by f i j is the fraction of the radiation is a fraction of the radiation leaving the surface i is a fraction of the surface leaving the fraction of the ra radiation leaving the surface i that is intercepted by the surface j is the fraction of the radiation leaving the surface i that is intercepted by the surface j. So, what are the units of f i j? No, no, no. Dimensionless. 
what are the limits of fij lowest and highest zero to one very good it is an efficiency how much the second fellow absorbs it picks up the radiation of the first fellow it it varies from zero to one it cannot take negative values it cannot take values more than one it doesn't have units of watts per meter square or say radian to the power of minus one or meter to the power of minus one whatever okay now anyway when we have drawn so much when there is so much build up logically mathematical formula formula must flow right so how do we go about how do you get the fraction how do you get the fraction so the fij will be written by whatever radiation coming from i received by j divided by the total radiation leaving leaving i okay so we have to evaluate the numerator and the denominator and make it more general and now we'll arrive at a general formula for fij now let us start with the general formula of f of dai to daj that is view factor between two elemental areas that i will call it as df so the elemental view factor then i will integrate first with respect to aj then i will integrate with respect to aa then two infinitesimally small areas one infinitesimally small area to a finite area then between two finite areas that is the way our derivation will proceed so first what is the what is the radiation which is leaving i which is intercepted by what is dq dai daj capitalize the intensity of surface i i is intensity of i i j is intensity of j it goes back to our definition of solid angle from there you have to same story starts i i first we will start with i i very good dai cos theta very good ah d d omega d omega j to i if that is what you are intend uh, implying it's fine d omega for people who have not followed i'll come again intensity in watts per meter square okay per per steradian watts per meter square per steradian multiplied by dai to take care of the projected area cos theta is coming because this fellow has to go in this direction right you want to do this okay then d omega j o j i fine now we can write the expression for d omega that is elemental solid angle next step <coughs> equal to is equals not aj ha ah, daj very good by r by r square very good is everybody through with this now you can substitute for d omega j i in equation 1 i have not evaluated the fraction okay i am just writing the dq first so i am getting the numerator in the definition substituting for now we consider i now we consider i to be a diffuse emitter and diffuse reflector that means it doesn't have a directional preference okay suppose i so we put it as 
what is leaving a surface consists of how many components emitted and reflected okay now i am saying it is diffuse so i will say i okay the intensity you can have intensity corresponding to emission intensity corresponding to reflection now i am already saying that it is diffuse so it doesn't have a directional dependence so i can make it pi okay so to make it clear i'll make it this i call it as ji did i define this j is called the radiosity have you defined this earlier okay i'm introducing a new term in today's class j is called the radiosity okay j is called the radiosity okay so radiosity what what are the units of that fellow so e is like a flux okay that is the leaving intensity multiplied by pi for a diffuse this don't ask me sir what happens if it is not diffuse and all that then all this theory will not apply you have to it becomes more difficult okay this theory is applicable for great diffuse surfaces i will tell towards the end we'll say we we'll list out the assumptions what are the assumptions under which this theory is valid okay now can i convert the i to j right uh i think it is fine right is it fine okay hmm let's call let's assign a number 4 to this so what is the radiation leaving dai what is the radiation leaving di ji <laughs> ah the radiation leaving radiation leaving di is ji into dai okay radiation leaving dai agreed watts per meter square into meter square watt okay then if you look at the uh, units for equation 1 2 equation 1 3 and 4 they are all having units of watt very good now now i can get the fraction okay therefore equal to cos theta i cos theta i cos theta j ah f is a fraction f is dimensionless right side is it consistent sure if if it is not consistent we made a mis mistake right da has got meter square r square has got meter square meter square meter square gets cancelled okay suppose you don't have uh, this is a fundamental form formula which can be used for example you are uh, you are computationally very rich right you have lot of resources with you then each of the surfaces you can divide into thousands of surfaces and treat each of each of the surfaces dai you divide that wall into another thousand surface each of these daj so you name this 1 to 1000 that is 1000 1 to 
So, 1 to 1001, 1 to 1002, 1 to 1003, you simply computer will calculate. You locate the center, locate the center there. Huh? So, root of x2 minus uh, xj minus xi whole square plus yj minus whole, j whole square root of root of uh, all sigma of all the 3 root of that will give r, calculate the cos theta, then you can do this, right. Now, you can see that view factor is not easy, right. So, if you want to subdivide and do, then it involves lot of computational power, okay. But one good thing is if you have a, if you have your geometry fixed, before you start your heat transfer problem, you just if the geometry is fixed, your view factor calculation is done. But your CFD solver is not like this, that is stupid thing. Every time the velocity will get updated, it is a non-linear problem. Here it is take your, it is like your mesh. If people are using fluent, you know if gambit, you do it once for all, that is it, unless your geometry is changing. Okay, so view factor the geometry is fixed. You can determine the view factors once and for all. Okay, now we are not interested in uh, this uh, view factor between infinitesimal areas. Now we want to look at view factor between first one uh, infinitesimal to finite area, then between two finite areas. Okay, so this is one. In phi now now I want to calculate the u factor between. D A I to A J. Okay. Now, what is the numerator? Over. Over. P constant over. Very good. Divided by. J D A. J I D A. Ah, J I D A I. That fellow stays. Because it is from DI only. Okay. Now, uh, the DIA can be pulled out. Okay, JI. DAJ. R will be a function of this, right? I cannot take R out. R will vary between two infinitesimal areas, right? Pi, if you want, you can put it inside or I hope I have not made any mistake. Is that correct? Any problem? Fine. Instead of saying each time f of a i to a j, I can just say f of i to j. What is that? <coughs> ah, divided by integral j. Ah? Very good. No, okay. Integral. If I assume that it is a uniform radiosity, then can I get rid of that for a uniform radiosity? Equal to.
is that correct? There is a j i j i a i in the denominator, there is a j i in the numerator, okay. So, the j i j i gets cancelled. Any problem? What is that? There is no integration. No. I do not get you. Integration is for the yeah, okay. <coughs> now, if you want to get view factor between these surfaces, now very good. This room is very ideal for explaining view factor. One uh, brown color box is there, um, surface. From brown color box, another brown color box that is i to j. Each of these i to j, what you can do is you can subdivide those boxes. Each hole is there, no? consider around each hole four holes as d a i, there are some four holes as d a j, calculate the view factor like that. It will, it will vary right, the r will vary from this last hole from the, uh, if you look at the southeast corner and the northwest corner there, there will be change in r okay. and please do not underestimate the importance of this, do not underestimate that uh, the, the difficulty associated with this. Integral a i, if it is a two dimensional surface, integral a i will represent d x d y, <coughs> integral a j will represent d x d y. A i will be d x i d y i, A ah, d x i d y i d x to j d o. So, Sparrow and his colleagues then after doing all this, they developed a technique called contour integration. Contour integration is a special craft known only to radiation heat transfer people, because to break down, to break down this four quadrupole integral, there are four, it is not in, we are more than triple integral. Okay. So, fortunately for us this uh, four integrals have been solved and it is available in the form of charts, simple cylindrical disc to cylindrical disc to disc, okay. parallelogram, parallelogram shape surface to parallel, rectangular surfaces, cube bottle surfaces, perpendicular surfaces and so on. Okay. Now, this is the view factor for a uniform radiosity. By intuition, can you tell me what will be what f j i will be? Okay. One by I think we need to put some numbers. What was this number? 6, 7, 7. Well, looking at 7 and 8, what can you say? Ah, a i f i j equal to a j s j i. This is what is called the reciprocal rule or reciprocity relation. Okay, this is called the now I want to solve a four zone enclosure. If I have to use a double integral and all this is going to take a lot of time. So, I want to see if there are some clever ways of getting the view factors without going through this painful integrals. Okay. So, this whole sub field where we try to manipulate algebraically and get view factors with minimum recourse to the original formula which involves integration is, is, a, is a sub field called as view factor algebra. So, 
so we will now get into view factor algebra because fine this is okay if you can write your program and uh, you your computationally very rich use this get view factors between whatever surfaces you have and continue your problem but now since this could be very messy this could involve lot of computational time and effort can we simplify for simple surfaces simple enclosures can we get better than this without taking recourse to this can we get view factors yes there are ways of getting this so that is a very interesting field called view factor algebra okay let us take an enclosure okay consider an enclosure of n, n sites somey what is the problem difficult difficulty staying away Huh? Not well. Taking a medicine. Taking a medicine. Cetirizine. Mm. <laughs> okay. So there are two medicines which are working. <laughs> I hope everybody got it. Huh? Ah. Okay. <laughs> Now for a. You got it, Deepak. <laughs> he is feeling sleepy because he has taken medicine. I am saying that there are two medicines which are working. Uh, apart from that medicine, <laughs> there is one more. Okay, now if there is a n surface enclosure, n square view factors. Why so so much n square view factors will be there. What are these view factors? Oh. So I will say total number of V F, V F is view factor is n square. Okay, I can write it like this. F one one, F one two, so on up to F one n. F two one, F two two, F two n, F n one, F n two. do you think it is very pragmatic for us for a five surface enclosure to get all the 25 u factors by using that stupid integral so there should be some other way out already already we got some idea a1 f12 equal to a2 f21 a1 f13 is equal to a3 so some fellows i am knocking off because of the reciprocal rules let us see if additional rules are available all these constitute the algebra Fine. Now, please tell me. Yeah, please look at the please look at the board and tell me. What is this? Very good. It has to be one because it. This is energy balance. From from a surface one, if there is a five surface enclosure, f one to one. Plus f one to two plus f one to three plus f one to four plus f one to five must be one. Where else will the energy go? Okay, so this is now for a n surface enclosure. How many such rules are available? N. So by the way, this is called the summation rule. or the sum rule for a n surface enclosure how many reciprocal rules are there you take a huh? n c2 very good n c2 relations two combinations take two surfaces at a time n 
this is equal to n into n minus 1 by 2 right. So, how many independent view factors have to be evaluated n square minus n minus n into n minus 1 by 2 correct because you can you can exploit the summation rule as well as the reciprocal rules. Therefore, the number of independent view factors to be determined What is this? 2 n square minus n minus n square plus n do all that. This again n c 2 right. What one more? No, that I am I'm coming. They are already jumping the gun ok. n c 2 fine. Now, let us look at the If if all the surfaces are plane or convex, what will what will this f i i be? Zero. Okay, for a surface like this. For this surface. Please note, concave surface will give some gut butt. So, you have to handle concave surfaces with care. Convex surface there is no problem, because if it is like a hemispherical cup, it will look at itself. So, that is called F i i, it is called give some name, self view factor. Okay. Now, if you if all the surfaces are plane or convex, total number of independent view factors How many such self view factors are there? Very good. Yeah. So, the goal the goal of the view factor algebra is to ultimately determine the number of independent view factors which have to be evaluated necessarily by adopting that cos theta i cos theta j. Now, let us take let us look at a very elementary problem simple problem. Let us take a three surface enclosure that is a triangular duct some gases are go inside and all that convection radiation is taking place do not worry about convection triangular surface n equal to 3 if you apply this formula how many independent view factors have to be determined 0 that means without using that integral you can get all the view factors can you get those fact view factors now shall we look at a general triangular enclosure let us do that problem and close the discussion for the day. which means you will write all algebraic relationships manipulate the algebraic relationships and get the all the view factors. Okay. A length is A. Yeah, what is this problem number? Problem number. 
17 okay you can uh, word the problem appropriately consider a triangular enclosure consider a triangular enclosure with three surfaces of length a b c determine all the view factors right consider a triangular enclosure how many of you got it already huh? 18. yeah what is it get, get i want a very nice answer is it what <laughs> I will, I will demonstrate. Please look at the board. Huh? It's unit depth in the other direction. No problem. <coughs> what area is the length, man? Into one. I will show you a quickly. I'll show you quickly a very cheeky way of doing it. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Agreed. Is everybody through with this? Pavan, Amrita, you, you have written all this. Now, please look at the board. Please look at the board. I multiply the first equation by A. I multiply the second equation by B. I multiply the third equation by C. I call this equation 4, 5, 6. I did not do anything great now. Now I will do 4 plus 5 minus 6. What is the beauty? A f a c equal to C f C a. I am adding 4 and 5 and subtracting from 6. Therefore, these two will go. Okay? B F B A equal to C F B F B C equal to C F B C. This will go. A F A B equal to B F B A. That is equal to two times. Correct. That is it. People who do not believe what I am saying, consider an equilateral triangle. What do you expect all the view factors to be? Equilateral triangle. Equal. Equal means what? 0.5. Are you getting? Let, let us take 1 meter, 1 meter, 1 meter. 1 meter plus 1 meter minus 1 meter by 2 meters. 0.5. Okay, there are some complicated ways of doing, but do not get psyched, man. I am teaching for many years, so it has taken many years for me to come out with such things. Okay. So, it can be easily done even if you do not do this uh, trick uh, cheeky algebra uh, by, by elaborate manipulation you can get the same result. Okay? So, tomorrow we will solve several puzzles. We will look at a cylinder within a cylinder, sphere with a sphere, uh, cylinder in a uh, cylinder within a half circle and all that and get view factors. Okay? And we will have to do one or two problems where the integral is also involved, so that you know how to handle that. Okay.